Hey guys, Jill here for Premiere Basics, a weekly series where we teach you all the ins and outs of Adobe Premiere Pro. Today, I'm going to show you how to get that cinematic film look with your videos. Now, big thanks to Film Convert for sponsoring this video and helping us out to achieve this film look with their amazing plugins. But I'll make sure to explain alternatives using nothing but Premiere Pro as well. Now, don't be mistaken, a film look doesn't mean a cinematic look. Film refers to the good old days where every movie was shot on actual film and it had a specific natural look. Now, I've taken some shots here on a Panasonic GH5 that we're gonna work with, but it also works with iPhone, GoPro, or any other camera too. Now, there are three important steps to achieving the film look. The first one is contrast. The blacks are never black and the whites are never white. Wait. What? Well, yes, because shadows are always lit in a way, so there's never a pure black part on screen. Okay, so drop your shot in Premiere Pro and let's get started. We're going to select the clip and head over to the window menu and from there, we're going to open up the Lumetri color panel. This shot, like I mentioned, was recorded on a Panasonic GH5 in a V-Lock color profile. But I've already applied a LUT to it, so we have a standard contrast and colors. The idea now is to create a nice roll-off. This means softening the highlights and the shadows, which are typical for film. Now we can do this from the curve step. We're going to drag up the black parts a bit and then lower the white parts. And what we're actually doing now is decreasing the contrast, thus faking more dynamic range. The shot looks flat, so we're gonna bring back contrast, which we're gonna do in the middle of the curves. So lower the shadows and raise the highlights, creating an S-curve to get that contrast back. If your brightest or overexposed areas become a bit too smooshy or gray, you can head over to the color wheels and match tab to add a bit of a warmer color to the highlights. Now the results are okay, but not that great. So let's check out Film Convert. I've installed the plugins and I can find them back in the effects library. Now Film Convert actually has two effects. Film Convert Nitrate, which is more of a color grading tool to get that film look, and Cinematch, which is the most powerful color correction tool there is. But I'll get to that later on. So let's drag Film Convert Nitrate onto our footage and let's go straight over to the effect controls. Now the first thing we can do in here is select the source our camera profile. Now I'm gonna pick Panasonic, GH5, V-Log and hit apply. And by setting my source correctly, this plugin will make changes to my clip according to my camera profile. This results in way more accurate results, which is a huge deal. Now from the color correction tab, we can then go over to the curves and make that same S-curve in here. There's also a levels control, which helps to define the black and white point better since we get a histogram as well. We can find the three color wheels in here too, which we can use to add a little bit of warmth into those overexposed areas. I find these color wheels to work a whole lot better. Now here's a side-by-side -side comparison. We can do it in Lumetri, but Nitrate gives us much better results as you can see. Now since we're in the Nitrate effect, let's go to the second step of creating that film look, which is grain. Now grain is not noise. Noise are digital dancing pixels and grain are natural particles on your film. Now many cinematographers love this dynamic grain and add these to their digital video in post. Now if we go back to the top of this effect, we find the film stock setting where we have a whole bunch of presets that we can choose from. This will adjust your colors and add grain to your footage according to that preset, which are all original stock emulations. Now, if you like, you can alter the film size and many different parameters that affect the grain as well. You'll also see a weird curve here, which is actually a curve to choose where you want more or less grain. Now, with this curve, you can only apply it to the highlights, for example, or only the shadows. And because we've set our camera profile in the source, these changes apply amazingly well onto our clip. There's not much we need to change. It works straight out of the box. Interesting as well is that here in the bottom, you can export a lot from the adjustments that you've made. This way you can apply it to your other clips without even needing the plugin. Now Premiere Pro also has a way to create grain or actually noise. From the effects library, look for the noise effect and drag it onto your clip. This effect doesn't have a lot of controls, but make sure to disable the color noise since a film camera doesn't really have that. Also, don't overdo the amount. I prefer a small amount like 10%. But as you can see, it looks very artificial, so not that nice and organic. Another way to get a grain look is with a stock clip, like this one from Storyblocks for example. Now place it on top of your clip and blend it with one of the blend modes. But once again, 
It's a quick and easy solution, but not the best looking. It doesn't really react to the footage, it just lays on top of it. Now the third step of getting the film look is to get rid of digital colors. Digital cameras are more sensitive to green and red. So as a result, they create this oversaturated, very vibrant green or magenta color. You notice this especially if you're in a forest or field and on your skin tones. Now to get rid of that green for example, with your clip selected, head over to the Lumetri color panel and then go to the HSL secondary tab and use the color picker to select your green. We want to make sure we selected all of our green, so we'll need to do some tweaking. Now once you have your selection, head over to the color wheel and add a little bit of yellow to soften that green and turn down the saturation to make it less vibrant until the green isn't popping as much anymore. And look at the difference. Now this comes closer to that film look. But to get an even better and faster result, we can also do this with Cinematch. Drag it onto your clip and head over to the effect controls panel. Just like before, we can set the source camera of our footage. Next, we can select a target camera to convert the colors to another camera. This is normally used in a multi-camera setup to bring the colors of all cameras to one specific camera. However, we can cheat a little bit here and pick out a camera that we don't really have. The famous Ari Alexa Cinema Camera. Now, this camera is famous for its color science as it is very natural and comes close to film. Now if you think some colors, for example the greens, are still not right then you can tweak it in the third step. Here you'll want to take the color picker of the source and select for example the green of your leaves. Once that's done, you can select the hue, saturation or luminance and adjust those. Of course this will depend completely on your shot but look at the difference it makes. Now we can do the same thing for the red or magenta colors, which are more likely to appear in skin tones. We can either use the HSL tab again from the Lumetri color, select the skin tones and push a little bit of green in there to counter that magenta. If needed, you can also make the skin tones warmer with the temperature slider. Or we can use Cinematch and do a clever trick to get really good skin tones. We start off by selecting the source with the color picker. And what I'm gonna do now is bring in a second clip with skin tones that already look natural. I use the target color picker from the Cinematch effect and select those skin tones. And there we go, Cinematch does the work for us. Now of course you can also combine Cinematch and Film Convert Nitrate together. You can start with Cinematch to color correct your shot, like we've seen, and then apply the Nitrate effect to grade your clip, giving it that film look and grain. So without a doubt, I highly recommend these tools. You can click the first link in the description down below to learn all about them. Now there's a trial, so you can try it out before you buy it. Now I hope you guys learned something new, and I'll see you again next week for a new tutorial. And as always... Stay creative.